I'm Heather, children's librarian at the Loveland Branch Library. And I'm glad to be with us here today to talk about our neighbor, Milkweed, and our friend, Monarch. But first, you might wonder why it's called Milkweed. The next time you see this plant on the roadside, go up to it and just rip a little piece of it and watch what happens. If you wait a while, you will see the milky sap start to collect on the edge of your rip. This sap is poisonous to many animals, but a few animals have evolved to eat the milkweed plant and can tolerate the sap also. Milkweed has a long history with people and animals. Actually, during World War II, kids like you were sent out by the government to collect the fluffy seeds of the milkweed, this fluff that the milkweed seed is attached to, and they use that in life preservers to help save soldiers and sailors during the war. But the milkweed plant is perhaps most famous for its relationship with the monarch butterfly. And we're gonna learn more about that in this book, Monarch and Milkweed, by Helen Frost and Leonid Gore. In a patch of dirt behind an old red barn, milkweed stretches into warm spring air. Its roots reach deep and wide, its stem points to the sky. Monarch spreads her wings and rides the wind past white and yellow daisies across the creek, heading north. And you can't tell, but this picture, this is taking place in Mexico when the monarch starts its journey. Milkweed's new leaves push out and then purple flowers, soft and round and fragrant. Monarch finds a dandelion drinks its, its nectar and flies on. She stops again, rests, and drinks and flies again. She, she has a journey of 2,000 miles to travel. Milkweed stretches taller. Two by two, its leaves spread wide, sheltering long-legged spiders and black and orange beetles. Monarch lights on milkweed, drums her feet on milkweed's flower, and tastes home. Milkweed's flowers fall away, green pods push out. Inside these bumpy fists, new seeds are forming. And here we have an example of a milkweed pod. You can see it's kind of bumpy and spiky. You might call it a bumpy fist. Monarch finds a mate and stays with him all afternoon, all night, into the morning. Eggs in her body grow heavy. She searches for milkweed. A breeze bends monarch, milkweed side to side. Monarch chooses its best leaf. Swaying in the breeze with milkweed, she curls her body underneath the leaf and glues one pale yellow egg to its soft underside. She flies from milkweed plant to milkweed plant, stopping on each to lay one shiny egg. And if you look close here, you'll see the egg. Inside Monarch's egg, a caterpillar forms, and four days later pushes out, shorter than an eyelash, almost invisible against the leaf's pale green. It eats the shell that held it and then moves across the leaf. It eats the leaf, it grows, and when it grows too big to fit inside its skin, it crawls right out. New skin already formed beneath the old. Yellow, black, and white, the monarch caterpillar feeds on milkweed's bitter leaves and grows. Four times the caterpillar sheds its skin, and then one evening in late summer, it weaves a sturdy pad underneath a milkweed leaf, hangs upside down and shapes its body like a J. Its feelers droop, and one last time it sheds its skin, it twists and turns and pulls its body up, transforming into a chrysalis. It hangs beneath the leaf, a shining jewel, jade green, speckled with gold. For 12 days, the monarch chrysalis shines in noontime shadows, and 12 nights it waits under the moon and stars. It grows darker, gray, and then black and orange as new monarch wings shine through.
Early one morning, the chrysalis splits open and a new monarch steps out. Moist wings press against her body. She clings to the clear case of the chrysalis as warm air dries her wings. She opens her wings, closes them, opens them wide. A light breeze lifts her and she flies. And she is beautiful. Milkweeds leaves, now full of holes, right? Holes where that caterpillar ate. Turn yellow and then brown, their edges curl and they begin to fall. The monarch flies from purple zinnia to black-eyed Susan, drinking nectar, getting ready. As the days turn cool, she turns south toward warmer air to begin her longest journey. Milkweed's pods are full. Its seeds are almost ready. In September's sun, the pod's strong walls turn dry and brown. Monarch flies and rides the wind, stopping only long enough to drink sweet nectar from a field of purple asters. She follows the last flowers of summer as she flies on and on, almost 2,000 miles all the way to Mexico. Milkweed's pods split open, brown seeds lay close together on a soft white bed. October wind catches a silky tendril, opens it and lifts a seed into the air, carrying it out and away across the river to an old white house. A kitten reaches up a paw and bats at the white fluff until it disappears. Rain comes, snow comes, rain comes again. Sun warms the earth, earth warms the seed and under the dirt it opens. Roots reach down. A tip of green presses out and up toward warmth and light. Milkweed's first spring leaf unfurls. And far to the south in Mexico, Monarch rides the wind back toward it. So we've just learned from this book how the milkweed is vital to the Monarch's survival. But there have been fewer milkweed plants in recent years. We can make sure there's plenty of milkweed available for the monarch caterpillar to eat by planting them ourselves. We can do that by making seed balls, milkweed seed balls. The first step to make a milkweed seed ball is to find your seed. You can buy a seed from seed companies, but if you go out and look for milkweed plants, you'll find the pods and you just open a pod that's starting to dry and inside you'll find the fluff and you wanna pull the brown seed away from the fluff. Be careful, the fluff is gonna go everywhere. And you can just dispose of the fluff. You go outside and blow it away, uh, or you can compost it. So you don't need a lot of seed. I'm just gonna get a few seeds here today and put them on this plate. Once you've gathered your seed, the next step is to mix the clay and soil together to make a ball. So I found some clay uh, at a art supply store and I added some potting soil to it. You just want to have enough potting soil in there so uh, to provide nutrients and you want to have enough clay so the ball holds together. I've put them in about equal proportions in the bag. You can also use uh, clay that you get at an art store that's already formed into a chunk uh, so long as it's natural clay. You want to look for those words natural clay. So I'm putting my uh, clay and my potting soil in the bag, I'm going to add one spoonful of water. The biggest mistake people make in making seed balls is adding too much water. If you start with just a little, you can add more if needed. I'm going to close up my bag. I'm doing this in a bag just to keep it from getting messy. You could also do it in a bowl. I'm going to mush up all that clay and potting soil together. I want it to be thoroughly mixed. You might have to mix it for uh, a minute or two to make sure it's all hanging together. You want it to be wet enough to form a ball, but not too wet where it's runny. I have enough clay in this bag to make maybe five or 10 balls, but we'll just uh, start with two for demonstration. I've made these balls, and I'm gonna press them down 
to make a little indent there on each one. And then I'm going to add three seeds to each ball. Why three, you might ask? Well, not every seed is viable. Not every seed will turn into a plant. But you also don't want too many seeds in there because then when the plants, the seeds do sprout, they have to compete with each other. You don't want your milkweed seedling to have to compete too much. I'm pressing in the, the seeds and then I'm re-rolling the ball with the seeds inside. So I encourage you to make as many balls as you would like. And once you've made them, you can do two things with them. You have two options. One, you can put them in the freezer. They need to get cold before the seeds will sprout. If you put them in the freezer, make sure you label the bag, seed balls, plant in spring. And uh, when spring comes, pull them out of the freezer, if, so long as they've been in there for about 40 days. And uh, then you can throw them or plant them where you want. You actually don't need to plant them in the ground. You just need to toss them somewhere where they can uh, take root. The second possibility is you can go out and throw your seed balls now because it's gonna get colder out and uh, then the seed balls will be exposed to the cold and the seeds will get cold in the spring. When it warms up, they'll be ready to sprout. And you have to keep your eyes there for little milkweed plants because they will come. If you don't see them the first year, they might be really small the first year, look for the second year and then look for those uh, monarch caterpillars and butterflies around the milkweed. Thank you for coming today and learning about milkweed and monarch with me. Um, remember, planting milkweed is one of the best things you can do to encourage butterflies around here, especially the monarch butterfly. And you can always learn more about butterfly gardens and butterflies by contacting your local librarian and they can uh, set you up with some books or videos about the monarch. Thanks so much for making seed balls with me today. Bye bye. Get free arts and crafts videos with your library card.